Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We are thankful that you have tuned in on today. I pray that your experience is well. We have our youth and young adult choir today to bless you through song. I pray that you get what the Lord has sent to you on your doorstep today.
and glorious, awesome, victorious. How great, how great, how great you are to me. Great and glorious, awesome, victorious. How great, how great, how great.
Not enough time to tell you how we saved my soul. Not enough time to tell you how he made me whole. Not enough time to tell you how he set me free. Cause he's been so good to me. So good, I just can't tell it all. So good. Not enough time to tell you how he saved my soul. Not enough time to tell you how he made me whole. Not enough time to tell you how he set me free. Cause he's been so good to me. So good, I just can't. you pleasant parishioners we are thankful that you are here today as we consult the word of God we want to consult with him who created the word of God let's pause for a word of prayer God we thank you for who you are we thank you for your presence and God we thank you for your power and we thank you for your provision and God we thank you for allowing us to have some level of insight into your word God, we pray that this time that I share before your people is not mishandled and not misappropriated. God, we pray uh, that this be a time where people seek to know you and seek to love you. 
Now, God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, our strength, my Redeemer, our Redeemer. Let us all say, whether we are present or virtual, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would go with me uh, to the book of Luke, uh, I know you've been out of church for quite some time. You may forget where Luke is. Luke is in the New Testament. Uh, it is one of the Gospels if you have uh, accumulated dust on your Bible. Amen. So we want you to go to Luke. Luke is in the New Testament. It is one of the Gospels. Amen. Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke. And then there's John. But today we're dealing with Luke 13. Uh, I, I pray that you all can laugh with me virtually, and I'm not calling you dummies in the word of God. Amen. Luke 13, Luke 13, we're looking at verses um, 20 and 21. Verses 20 and 21. One. We're looking at verses 20 and 21 of Luke, the 13th chapter. Now, I'm reading from uh, the New Living Translation, so your rendition may read just a little bit different than mine. There you will find these particular words. He also asks, what else is the kingdom of God like? Is it like the yeast a woman used in making bread? Even though she put only a little bit of yeast in there, three measures of flour, it perme per permeated every part of the dough. It permeated every part of the dough. Brothers and sisters, if you would, I want to use as a framework for the time that we share together, uh, brothers and sisters, the part that you play, the part that you play. Brothers and sisters, as we look at this particular text, we understand that Jesus is preaching uh, to a group of people, and he was sharing with them uh, what parts they play in the kingdom of God. He was sharing with them that the kingdom is likely to come, but their participation was paramount in helping the kingdom of God to come. He was talking about the importance of the kingdom of God, and as we consider this text, it is important to understand that Jesus was in the process of explaining the nature of the kingdom of God. And many times, in order for us to be able to understand Jesus, uh, Jesus has to make some sermonic illustrations, which we've come to know as parables. Jesus addresses his visual learners as many teachers have to do from time to time because they realize that everyone does not learn on the same level. So therefore, he addresses the visual learners, uh, not the auditory learners or the kinesthetic learners, but he's addressing the visual learners by painting a picture so that the kingdom of God can be understood by those who were most uninformed, those who were most un 
aware, those who were most unchurched. And I just believe, brothers and sisters, uh, as a church of God, we ought to be doing everything within our power to share and spread the word of God to those who are uninformed, those who are unaware, and those who are unchurched. In doing so, Jesus shared many parables. And I just believe that if he lived in our day and time, perhaps he'd use uh, some um, brothers and sisters, some technology. Uh, perhaps he'd show videos on the screen. Perhaps he'd use, uh, um, he, perhaps he'd use a Zoom call. Brothers and sisters, what he was doing was getting folks to know what the kingdom of God uh, was like. And the first of these two short parables was the kingdom, and he was talking about uh, the kingdom of God was like a mustard seed. The mustard seed uh, portrayed its strange and rapid growth with receding resources. What I'm sharing with you is, brothers and sisters, uh, what must be suggested on today that God is a God that we serve that can help you uh, to uh, uh, be victorious and God will help you to succeed no matter what your defect or what your deficiency is or what your dilemma is, God can give you an extraordinary uh, result. The parable of the mustard seed refers to the outward growth of the believer, but the parable of the yeast refers to the inward growth of the church. The parable of the mustard seed refers to the progress of church in the society, but the parable of the yeast refers to the intensive inward transformation of each believer. This is important because there can be no systemic transformation without personal evaluation. Brothers and sisters, nothing can be done on a grand scale unless everyone takes an inward look at themselves. That's why Mahatma Gandhi said, let the change that I wish to see begin in me. This parable attempts to teach us three things. First of all, never underestimate small beginnings. You don't ever want to underestimate small beginnings. Don't ever est underestimate the fact that you have small beginnings. Secondly, what this parable posits to point out to us is that when the Holy Spirit is a part of our lives, there is no limit to what can happen in a person life. I'm preaching. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit is a necessary ingredient in the believer's diet. Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit is a necessary ingredient in the believer's walk with life. Furthermore, Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit is is like yeast. And what he's saying is, because it is like yeast, what Jesus is saying is that if you are like the Holy Spirit and if you have the Holy Spirit, number one, it spreads. The Holy Spirit spreads. The Holy Spirit spreads. It changes its environment. It affects everything around it. It grows. It produces an ambiance around it that nobody else can challenge. Thirdly, brothers and sisters, we discover that transformation is taking place even when we don't see it happening. When the Holy Spirit is at work, 
in our lives, God is at work even though we are unaware of the changes that are taking place in our lives. As we look at this lesson, as we look at this text, I want to examine just a few things particularly about a particular ingredient that Jesus is talking about. He is talking about yeast. This is an ingredient in the parable, uh, it, it is yeast. It applies to the gospel and how it can change our lives. And I want to pause parenthetically and suggest to you that in order for your meal or whatever you're cooking, whatever your menu is, in order for it to come out right, in order for your dish to taste good, you've got to have the right ingredients. Where what my old saint said, the cook. You all know that you've got to have the right ingredient in your cooking. As we work through this lesson, I want to examine a few things particularly about this ingredient. ingredient. Brothers and sisters, again, this mentions yeast. Uh, first of all, let us consider the presence of yeast. Uh, let us, he, he mentions yeast for a reason because he wants us to understand how yeast, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, may uh, be comparable to the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yeast, if you really do any research on it, it's a single cell organism. It is a fungus and the presence of yeast in flour is alien to its constitution. It is foreign, a foreign element that is introduced into flour and it is introduced at the baking process in order to bring out a dramatic reaction. The yeast is radically different than the flour that it is put in, but nevertheless, the yeast needs the flour to survive. I, I wish I had some help in here. This presents a picture of what it is like when we receive Christ. The Spirit of God comes from the outside and it desires to dwell on the inside and it makes us a totally different person. The purpose of yeast, as we look at the text, we understand that in the text we see that the yeast's purpose is not to destroy the flour, but the purpose of the yeast is to invigorate the flour, to make the flour become something that it would have no otherwise become. What I'm sharing with you is, brothers and sisters, that all of us need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit stirs up something on the inside of us that we would have not otherwise become. We need the Holy Spirit. It's not to destroy the flower. Instead, it comes into the flower. It changes everything. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I think every time I eat a loaf of bread, I thank God for the Holy Spirit because number one, what it does, it expands what Jesus has said through this illustration in the parable is that God takes what we are and through his Holy Spirit, he expands on the inside of us, working on the inside of us and produces the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. Because if we did not have the Holy Spirit working within us, brothers and sisters, there are a whole lot of things that we could not do. If we did not have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of us, brothers and sisters, there are some things that we could not do. 
the Holy Spirit works on the inside of us so that we can have hope and peace in difficult times. When the Holy Spirit works on the inside of us, we have strength to endure trials. When we have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of us, it gives us wisdom to make the right decisions. When we have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of us, we have blessed assurance in times of uncertainty. When we have the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, we have power to overcome temptation when we have the Holy Spirit he gives us sight so that we can avoid the traps that Satan has set before us when we have the Holy Spirit we have comfort in the midst of chaos I want to take another look at this parable brothers and sisters and as I take another look at this parable it is worth recognizing that yeast causes dough to rise <laughs> where, 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 where are my cooking saints again I need just a few cooking saints to give me witness brothers and sisters is there anybody in the house that ever has tried to cook homemade biscuits without adding yeast to the dough I wish I had just one saint that remembers that time when they tried to cook a homemade biscuit and did not allow the yeast to be a part of that situation. Brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you is that yeast has a characteristic in it and what yeast does, it causes dough to rise. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Perhaps God has called you as a believer, a pleasant parishioner, uh, a PGMBC. Uh, God has placed you in a situation. God has placed you uh, in an environment. God has placed you in a milieu that God wants you to help raise the standards. Do, do I have any witnesses in here today? God is using you and God has yeast on the inside of you. Perhaps the Lord wants to place you somewhere where it, perhaps the Lord wants you to play, wants to place you in crude company so that standards could rise. Sometimes God wants to place you in a place where everyone seems like they are depressed, brothers and sisters, so that their expectations can rise. Somebody, God is placing you in a, in a milieu where everyone seems like they're down and out because he's placing you there so that their confidence can rise. God is placing you in some places because he wants you to raise some expectations. Brothers and sisters, one of the things about uh, yeast, it makes stuff rise. And I want to share this with you as I look at this particular parable. Uh, what shouts loud to me is, is that there is a uh, power in yeast and also there's present the presence of yeast changes things and also brothers and sisters there is a process in yeast there is a process in yeast and there's a couple of sub points that I want to talk about in the process of yeast first of all what I noticed about yeast is the process is silent the process the process is silent the work of yeast it makes no noise. It makes no noise. In considering this parable, one becomes familiar with the value and the importance of silence. This parable prompts us to recall, or it prompts me to recall that in my entire 39 almost 40 years of living as hungry as I have been and as much as I have watched my mama cook and my grandmother cook bread never have I heard bread baking 
Y'all missing your shout. Never have I heard bread baking. What are you saying, Reverend Letcher? What I'm saying is that it is a process that makes no noise. Sometimes God favors formidable change without a great big fanfare. Sometimes God works in the middle of silence. In the same manner, the secret and the sacred work of the Holy Spirit often begins in silence and it works in stillness. So they don't ever believe because it's quiet and because you are in quarantine, don't ever believe that God is not working on your behalf. That's why it's important for us not to underestimate this time of quarantine because oftentimes in silence and in solitude, God is doing a great thing. I'll call on one witness. I have a few, but I'll just call on one. You all remember uh, in Joshua, the sixth chapter, don't you? The children of Israel were ordered to walk around the walls of Jericho, it seemed like they were doing the same thing month in and month out. When are the doors of the church are going to open? They were doing the same thing month in and month out. But the Lord told them just to be quiet and just keep your mind and your heart on me. He told them to keep on walking and keep on walking, keep on walking, but yet we must understand that God was working out their deliverance while they were quiet. Sometimes God doesn't need a whole lot of pomp and circumstance to get his point across. And after walking around the walls of Jericho silently for six days, while they were silent, God was working on their deliverance. And on the seventh day, they got back into church. I wish I had some help in here. On the seventh day, they got back into church. They had the musicians to come. They had the trumpets to play. They got together and they shouted because God had delivered them. You've got to be patient while the Lord is working on your problems. I want to encourage somebody today, be patient while God is working on your problems. That's why uh, Isaiah said, they that wait on the Lord, the Lord will renew your strength, and then after the Lord renews your strength, you'll be able to mount up on wings as eagles. Be still and know who God is. Also, brothers and sisters, in the process, uh, there's a purpose of the yeast. Then in the process of the yeast, the process is silent. Uh, the process is also strong because, again, it changes everything around it. And the last piece I want to share with you uh, as I leave you on today is that the process is savory. The process is savory. Uh, there are a few instances I can think of about savoriness. Uh, but I'm just about done here, and I recall the impact that my grandfather made upon me as a child. Oftentimes, grandfather would get up early, uh, and he would be early to bed and early to rise. And I wonder why granddaddy was early to bed, early to rise, because another thing that he shared with me, the early bird gets the worm. And one of the reasons that I, that I discovered uh, was that granddad would wake up early because he would get up and travel to the Wonder Bread warehouse in the middle of town in Memphis, Tennessee. He would get the fresh bread and he would bring it home 
to the family to enjoy. So one day I decided that I wanted to know where this hostess cake factory was and I wanted to know where granddad was getting these fresh loaves of bread. So I decided that on one Friday that I'd get sick. And when I decided that I would get sick, I decided also that when I got up early on Friday morning, I decided that I'm going to ride with granddaddy to see where he was picking up these goodies. And I want to pause parenthetically and share with you, brothers and sisters, that the Lord Jesus Christ also rode uh, uh, for us on one Friday so that we can enjoy the access of the good things that God has prepared for us. I'm not ready to go there yet, but I'm reminded of when David says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I could smell the sweet, savory aroma that fill the air. And I mean uh, the very air around the factory communicated the fact that there was something good going on on the inside. I mean, I was still asleep in the back seat of the car why granddad was still approaching the Wonder Bread factory. I woke up because my smell woke me up and said something good is going on in the factory. Brothers and sisters, all I'm sharing with you is, is that is how we ought to be in a world of sin. The word of God shares with us that we ought to be like the salt of the world. We are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavor how shall we season it is then good for nothing but to be cast out and trampled under the foot of men brothers and sisters what I share with you is that our lives our lives ought to affect everything around us our lives ought to smell sweet. Our lives ought to flavor uh, our environment. Our lives uh, ought to be seen on a hill, like a, a, a lamp on a hill. Brothers and sisters, our lives ought to flavor whatever uh, uh, milieu we come in contact with. Brothers and sisters, our lives ought to be seen as a spotlight. Things ought to change because you are a part. Brothers and sisters, I'm leaving you now. But again, if, when I leave you, I pray that this blesses you on three particular parts. I pray that you understand that your life should be a presence. Your life should have a particular power and your life should offer a particular process. Understanding uh, that the process of yeast is silent, is strong, and it's savory. May God bless you, and the door of God's house is open. The door of God's house is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Brothers and sisters, if you desire to become a part of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, you can do so uh, by emailing us at ghpruitt at gmail.com. Uh, if you don't know a pleasant parishioner, you can email us at ghpruitt uh, at gmail.com. Or if you know someone who is a part of Pleasant Green, reach out to them, text them, email them, tell them that you, you heard something good about Pleasant Green and you want to be a part of the body of Christ through the ministry of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Thank God for all of our visitors, all of our visitors. If you are a virtual visitor, we thank God for you. We thank God for you. We are a church who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people through five different tenets. Brothers and sisters, we are a church who is struggling to become 
pleasantly purposeful for all people. You are welcome. You are welcome to share with us. and We thank God for you being our guest. Now, brothers and sisters, we thank God for all of you who have been practicing uh, generosity during this season of uh, pandemic. We thank God for all of you who have uh, practiced a life of generosity. If you would like to start a life of generosity, uh, there's a few ways that you can give to the church, namely two. Uh, I want to share two ways you can give to the church. You can give by mail. You can give by mail, U.S. postage, that is. You can give by mail. You can mail it in to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church at 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can give by check or money order by mailing it in uh, to 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Also, brothers and sisters, you can also give uh, technologically online. You can give online. You can give by sending uh, or logging on to our website at www.pgmbcstl.org. And you can uh, click on the giving tab uh, and you can give electronically. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Those are our ways to give. And we pray again that you have gotten something out of our worship service. Brothers and sisters, uh, as we prepare to part ways, I just want to pray a word of benediction over you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. May we all say uh, pleasant green style. Amen and thank God. God bless you. I pray that this week's service has inspired you. I pray that it has informed you and I pray that it has evoked you into living a life that is satisfactory in the sight of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, one of the things we want to mention is that this is, although we are in COVID season, children are still going back to school, uh, whether it be virtually or whether it be in person. So we as a church, we're trying to be a blessing to the children who are going back to school. So brothers and sisters, we want you to remember that on the 29th, we are sharing with our community and sharing with the church. Uh, and we want you to be a part of that uh, in our sharing with uh, our school age parishioners. Also, we just want to remember uh, you all be kind to those who are going to school. We want you to give to the Samaritans. The Samaritans are doing a lot of work to ensure that people have the resources they need to get a good education. Brothers and sisters, again, I just pray that when you have tuned in to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church that you have been inspired, that you have been informed, and you have been evoked to do what is pleasing before the Lord. May God bless you and may God keep you until we meet again.